I love great conversations. Hi, my name is Angel Jones. Thank you for joining me on 12 Minute Convos, where I help you create a brand of your own unique real self. Listen in as I have conversations with amazing people from all over the world. Good night, good night, Amy Rutherford. How are you doing on this wonderful, beautiful night? I am doing absolutely fantastic, Angel, and I'm excited to be with you today. Oh, that's wonderful. It's a great pleasure to connect with you. What part of the world are you in right now? I live in a town just south of Denver called Parker, Colorado, Ooh. in the United States. All right. And which of your talents is responsible for us connecting at this time? My husband and I retired in 2015 in our 40s, and we... it's. What makes that surprising is that we were actually kind of large living people. We spent quite a bit of money, but we were able to change things quite dramatically in a short time. So we retired in 2015, and now we blog about that at www.gowithless.com. Ooh, love it already. Well, that's great. <laughs> Thank you. So how has life been knowing that you've downsized? Life, uh, this is no exaggeration. I, I don't think a day goes by, it's been about two and a half years, and I don't think a day goes by when I don't really settle into this thought of, wow, this is my life. It is unbelievable. I love my life. Hmm. That's amazing. So who did you learn what was necessary to downsize from? Well, we tracked, my husband is a good tracker. So he has tracked his spending since he was out of college. So we knew what we were spending and we didn't know what how, we, we knew we wanted to retire early, but we didn't know how much we needed. We made, both of us made good incomes. Both of us were excellent savers. So even though we spent a lot, we saved a lot as well. And, and what we realized is how much money do we need to save? To, to have in order to retire. And we had that by meeting with a life insurance agent who taught us something called the 4% rule. And so learning about the 4% rule helped us understand how much money we needed to retire and that as our spending went down, the amount of money that we needed went down significantly. So we were able to trim, 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 and the trimming actually was, was great. So we, it turns out that we were happier trimming. It wasn't we weren't deprived. We were happier doing it on the other side, which I wouldn't have assumed or guessed at the beginning of that project. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love what you said that. So why will you continue to live in a lifestyle as you are right now? Well, when you have to pinch yourself every morning to make sure that this is a dream, <laughs> who wouldn't want to keep that up? We So in our old life, and we, we liked many things about our jobs. So we didn't just hate everything about work. There were lots of things that we really, really, really enjoyed about working. And, but I mean, I didn't get much vacation time. So I had maybe two or three weeks of vacation time that might include sick time. And, and that there's not that my family doesn't live nearby. So, so there's not a lot left. And Tim and I are both travelers. So now we took 10 trips this year wow. in 2017. Yes, we have one last trip coming up in two weeks. So, and we get to do that on our reduced budget, which is even like that, that just blows us away. Hmm. So, on the blog, are you helping people understand how they can travel on less as well? We, well, we plan to. So, we are, we launched our blog in April of this past year, and we're working to get more content more uh, po post more frequently so that's something that we are actively working on we're starting with videos and I have a YouTube channel so so that's a work in progress so so and I'm going to do a big year wrap up at the beginning of January of how did we do so two of us took 10 trips to places like the south of France and Paris New York City Disney World we did this for not not quite $10,000 between the two of us. How did we do that? So I'm getting ready to write that post after we get back from our last trip. And I'll get that out in January to show the nuts and bolts of where, how, how did this break down? Love it. And all of this is available on goalwithless.com. Yeah. That's right. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Well, tell us one other thing that you've done consistently over the last three years, please. Sure. Um, 
I'd say it was, it was because we retired it about two and a half years ago. About three and a half years ago is when we, my husband and I, started dialing in to our spending, and we and there, there's a sentence I have said, my husband has said, I hear this out all the time of it's just insert the dollar amount, it's just five dollars, it's just ten dollars, it's just fifty bucks, whatever. Maybe it's a gourmet meal and it's just a hundred dollars, and that might be a good price for that good gourmet meal. We've taken that concept out of our vocabulary. So it's not just that it adds up because it does, but more than anything, it's that you're not having mindfulness about your spending. So what we've been doing consistently for the past three years is being mindful about every single decision, every bottle of water. Can I just bring my water bottle instead? Mm -hmm. Every, every, everything we do, we think about before we purchase it. Do we need it? Does it make sense in our lives? No matter how much it is. Yeah, I think it's really beautiful what you've done. Again, there's one, there's a difference between being cheap and um, being frugal. I think frugality is tied to a bigger good, a bigger satisfaction. Uh, I love how you've shared how one thing connects with the other, where not spending on this little thing allows you to do so many great big things. Is that accurate? It is. And actually, I don't mind cheap or frugal. However, I heard a really great word yesterday that really, really describes us. And that would be valuist. So we are into value. So we, we spent $10,000 in a reduced budget on travel. That's a lot of, I mean, even though it's not a lot of money for 10 trips and what we've done, but it's a lot of money, $10,000. And that's certainly a, a place for, for some serious cash. But it, we looked at every single bit of that with value in mind. So I, mm. I really like that word valuist. I think I'm going to take that on yeah. for the next year. I love it too. Yeah. <laughs> it's mine now as well. I love it. Oh, I, I, I took it from someone else. This is, this is a sharing community. And there we go. Well, amazing audience. You're hearing it live here from Amy Rutherford. Again, you can connect with her via gowithless.com. Follow the blog, Travel Massive, if you would. Um, let's switch gears for a moment now. Let me invite you into my time machine that is surrounded with beautiful, warm, blue Caribbean water. Amy, what is your earliest childhood memory? It was about when I was about three and a half years old, and my mom had my baby sister in her crib, and so she had her in her crib. We went out, we lived on a corner in a suburb, and we went and looked at all the Christmas lights on the street corner of our neighbors. So we didn't go too far from our house because my little sister was at home in bed in her crib. But um, but going out and enjoying the Christmas lights, and that's always stuck with me I still to this day. And how, how, I mean, it's a free activity. So not only do I love it, but it's so, it's free. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it seems as though you're connecting the dots already. So how old were you at that time? I think I was about three and a half. All right. Why do you think this memory is so clear? I think I, I'm like, so, so I'm, I'm nearing 50 and I have a, a childhood appreciation for Christmas lights. And I think that because of my earliest memory, or at least one of my earliest memories, I think that's why I have such an affinity for those lights. And I, I, I'm not, so adults know that Amy really, really loves Christmas. <laughs> this isn't just normal people loving Christmas lights. This is like, I'm like a a kid loving Christmas lights. So I think I, I just connect right down into that, which mm. I think is such a nice memory. That's amazing. Now you left your sister, your mother left your sister alone, did she? I, this was in, this was in the, this is when it 70s. was okay to do that, right? <laughs> this was in the, my mom was a good mom, but this was in the early seventies when people weren't as obsessed with safety. So she was asleep in her crib for, we're talking, we're talking 10 or 15 minutes. So we're not talking very long. So she was just out. In her, that's cool. In her that's cool. That's cool. <laughs> but it was, it's a different time now. Can I offer an interpretation? No baby monitors in the early seventies. Oh, good. Can I offer an interpretation to the thought picture you created in my mind? Yes. I love the idea. Now, of course, we're not suggesting, amazing audience, that you leave your child alone. Um, <laughs> but what I love is the idea of really reassessing what is true safety when it comes to value in your life. And the, the, I mean, as we all know, we everyone knows that the best things in life are free. So it's love, it's your family, your friends, your health. It's these things. These things don't cost anything. Exactly. And I mean, there's a concept in our minds that just like the day job you had, 
that that was safety and that connected you to the best of everything in life. Uh, who would have thought just walking down the street and looking at lights would have brought so much value? That's right. I didn't need all the Christmas gifts. I just needed the, the lights. Exactly. If we fast forward to when you were 12, what was your favorite song? Well, I, when I was 12, it would have been 1980 and some really big stuff had just come out. So Michael Jackson's Off the Wall came out. And I have no doubt that I had his album on, on replay over and over again. But I'm going to go with a song that I was totally obsessed with by Earth, Wind & Fire I'm going to go with Boogie Wonderland. Ooh, well, you've been <laughs> definitely boogieing in Wonderland. <laughs> I love that song. That's amazing. <laughs> All right. Well, Amy, we have arrived at our destination. But before we get off on this time machine, there's a small declaration form. So it's yes or no, possibly a bit more. We're going to move pretty quickly here. Are you ready, Amy? I'm ready. Bring it. Amy, have you chosen someone to pass on your skills to? Yes. Our blog audience and our daughter. Ooh, how many children do you have? Tim has three children, so they're my stepchildren, and one of them still lives with us. She's 16 years old, and she is taking those lessons. I, I can see that they are becoming her new foundation. Wow, so Tim is your husband. Do you believe in God? Yeah. I believe in karma. Do you have an inner circle of friends? Yes, a very, very strong one. Do you watch TV for more than three hours a day? No, I'd say we watch about one hour a day. All right. And what about screen time? Is it more than eight or less than eight hours a day? I'm going to think it's about eight. If you, Amy, right. had to share with us your own unique real statement, a statement that represents Amy Rutherford, what would you say that is? This one's easy. More living, less spending. Mm, love it. Amy, this has been a great pleasure. Before you leave, is there anything else you'd like to share with our amazing audience? Uh, well, thank you for having me. And please check out our website. Again, it's go with www.gowithless.com. Sign up for emails and we'd love to see you. Love it. Amy Rutherford, thank you for being on What is Inspired by 12 Minute Convos with Angel Jones. Thank you, Angel. You're welcome. Thank you for being on 12 Minute Convos with Angel Jones. Stay tuned for more from our advertisers. Diabetes is a mountain pandemic. It's a disease that's not acute, but chronic. Similar to this rhyming method, I have simplified the definition, the signs and symptoms, and the complications of diabetes for both adults and children in my books, Poems for Patients, A Focus on Diabetes, and The ABCs of Diabetes for Children. These books are available on Amazon.com, and for more information, you can visit my website, poemsbyag.com. That's poemsbyag.com.